welcome to His and Hers video podcast. My name's Melissa. And I'm Sean. And this is episode number 34, which we're going to title, Thank You. Thanks for sticking around. Gracie, get down. It's been too long. It has. You have hair on your face. So, <laughs> what's new with you? Not much. Working. Mm -hmm. Playing games. Indeed. The cat is attacking an Ikea bag. She loves it. I'll take a picture. Still working on my washcloth. You did two rows last week. Working on it is a very, very loose term. There's been progress, so... Other than that, mostly playing... video games. Very cool. What video games have you been playing? Uh, pretty much exclusively Dust 514, which if anyone remembers from episode 33, which felt like two and a half months two ago. Two and a half months ago, which because it was. Uh, it's set in the Eve universe, playable on the PlayStation 3 for free. So if anyone wants to pick up a free game, you don't have to pay to play for it. You can pay money to actually buy stuff if you want to. And I have, I have invested in the game because I think it's really good. And that's the only way games like this will exist, is if some people decide to buy some stuff, so... But you buy it through PlayStation Network, so your identity and credit card it's are all secure that network. way. Yeah, you don't necessarily give them your information, it's all done through your account through the PlayStation Network, so... Which turned out to be a good thing. Because they were hacked last weekend. Now, they weren't really hacked, they were... Attacked. Attacked. Uh, somebody decided to DDoS, and I don't really know what the acronym stands for. There's a bunch of long words. I have come up with all sorts of things. None Basically, of them appropriate. No. Basically, it, me it meant that there was a bot constantly trying to log in. Uh, multiple times per second. Yeah, multiple times per second. And what it allowed is for no one to be able to sign in. So I noticed For more things, than a day. It was over, it was over, it was almost 48 hours. Well, and then they shut it off, so that nobody, because they found that there was a problem, so then it was down for a couple of days. But um, whoever it was, supposedly the news feed said that they weren't looking for private information, they were just wanting to stop the play. So right. it's either somebody who was terrible at the game, or I don't know what. Jealous but of the people who created there's, it. There's a lot of, you know, Eve has been going on, they just had their 10 year anniversary, so it's, there's a lot going on in that game. And it's a little bit like video game LARPing. People really go and if LARPing, live action role playing. Which is totally fine. Lisa, I'm not making fun of you. Nobody's making fun of anybody. But these people, there's espionage like within the game and people like actually take some of their like real life stuff and, and translate it into Eve a little bit and it's a that little That happens in knitting. It, it's a little overboard. Some of the stuff is a little... But I, if that's what you do, and you've been doing it for a long time, and you have a character that's built up, I mean, I don't play Dust. I mean, I pretty much played it almost every night that when I play. That's the only game I've been playing, because I feel like I'm so far behind. Some people have, like, 9 million skill points. And if you, How many skill points would you get for playing one game? You get between 6,000 and 8,000 pretty much consistently if you, if you get, like, a positive kill-death ratio. If you don't, but you still win, you can get between six and 7,000 pretty consistently. If you have what they call a booster on, an active booster, meaning that the skill points you get while you're playing, if you have that booster on, which mine is set to run out, I think in about two hours. So the one that I purchased, well, it's all, you don't really purchase it. You use in-game or currency that you actually buy with real money. So you said they had 90,000 points? These no, people? it's 9 million. 9 million? Some people have over 12 million. And I'm very proud of my 5.5 million. <laughs> so you can see, you know, and there are passive boosters. They get so 9,000 if they win? That's high. I've been getting 9,000. We'll 000. say that they're really good. I've been getting 9,000 the past couple of, the past week because I bought an active uh, booster, which me meant that my skill points were getting boosted the entire time. So, um, but That means that they've played... a. That was simple math, but they've played, if they're really good, a thousand games. Yeah. And, and that's since the reset? Uh, no, that's for the four months, because they let okay. us keep our skill points 
during the beta. Makes more sense because the reset so. was two weeks ago. Right, but that didn't res all that did is erase the choices you made. Right, you got to retain all of your skill points. Okay, so sorry, catching up. It was called a respec, which meant you got to reset, redistribute respec. all. Of you got to redistribute all of your skill points to the different things that you're trying to unlock and to create the character. Reskin, rehang. It's all the same. So, but if you're into Eve type games where it's super super custom customizable your character, you like really build. World of, World of Warcraft. It's World of Warcraft like, but in a first person shooter genre, which is the first time they've taken a Call of Duty type game and really transplanted some sort of role-playing game structure over it. Right. So, and it's not easy, and people get discouraged, and there's a lot of... People do? There's a lot of rage quitting. There, there's, there's some of that? I don't know where I've seen that happen. I was discouraged, but I was discouraged... There was some rage quitting. I'm never playing this game again. I was discouraged during the beta, because, I mean, the game was pretty much broken for a few weeks, because... Skill points weren't accruing, your kills weren't showing up, the money. There's two different forms of currency because it's it's an actual living economy that's been living in Eve for a long time that they're trying to build right. dust into. So, um, ISK is the game currency that you receive by winning and doing cool things during rounds, and Orum is the kind that you actually can purchase through the PlayStation Network for. Twenty dollars, you get like two hundred million or or two hundred thousand orum, something like that. So, the only orum I bought was I purchased the mercenary pack when it first started, which gave me a couple hundred thousand. And then I bought once I used that and distributed. It, th the reason they kind of have it is so that you can try things without necessarily having to spend all of your skill points, because once a skill point is spent or a group of skill points is spent, until the respect, you couldn't get any of it back. So you really. I, and, and we knew that they were going to give it back, so that's why a lot of us weren't really focused on our choices. We were trying to build an assault character who also had some sniping capabilities, who was also had some heavy, heavy assault stuff, and the cat is digging through a giant tarp bag, which is kind of funny. It's her case. And now she might be making love to it. <laughs> that's not appropriate. Anyway, so once we figured out or once a character would figure out exactly the direction they wanted, you really wanted to spend all your skill points. The way they've structured it is that you cannot make the character you want right away, which is frustrating for a lot of people because if you play Call of Duty, you can pretty much make your, you know, set up your character exactly how you want it, maybe in 72 hours. And you're <laughs> we'll pan over later because this is pretty funny. Or you can actually see some pictures because she's going to continue to shoot. They're really funny. So it took me four months to figure out the kind of player I wanted to be based on the, the corporation that I belong to, which is, that's a, a, what, like a clan is called, if you're, if you're familiar with video games, they have corporations, and it's all a structure built into the game, which is cool, you don't have to do it yourself, like on websites, you can, and my corporation's trying to, but it's all kind of built into the game where there's different ways you can talk to people and communicate right in the game itself, which is cool. Well, once we figured out what kind of, then once you figure out the kind of player you want to be, then you can. Now that I've, they've given me the respec, I can now spend the skill points where I want to. And the Orum will allow you to buy things and try them out without wasting those skill points necessarily. So. Cool. So it's very in depth, and it's a lot of fun if you have time to spend. Which you've been. And doing I've been quite using. A bit of. I've been using my time pretty much all of it, the time that I get to play for that, and I'm still nowhere near where well, I feel like... most of these people don't have jobs like yours, well, yeah. and don't have two young children. And the game is really, I mean, it came out on, it's, you know, the name of the game is Dust 514, so they obviously wanted to release it May 14th, there's a lot of speculation that they released it a little too early, it wasn't really secure, obviously it was able to be hacked, and there was some pretty tough lag issues um, during corporation battles which is there's a whole tournament it's kind of like a tournament structure built in where you have control over certain planets I mean there's hundreds of thousands of star systems in this fictional universe and we all have kind of a little piece of this pie we should take a screenshot of that it's kind of cool when I you mean, log it, in later and it's not something that they created for dust this is the Eve universe that we're playing in the basic premise of the game is that in the past Eve battles were fought on planets by 
basic rolls of the dice, kind of. Like, yay, this happened, and this happened, and it was all based on not something really happening. Now those battles are fought on the planets by people playing on their PlayStation 3s, which instantly gave uh, EVE players, and they're called Capsuleers, and the idea is that they're, um, what's the word? They can't be killed. Undead, invulnerable, immortal. Uh, immortal. They're immortals that fly around in spaceships. Their bodies are at some base somewhere. And there's like clone flying spaceships, so they're out there doing their thing. And that's the same kind of thing in Dust, and that's kind of how they explain respawning. Because you purchase and own so many clones that you outfit with different equipment and drop suits, and you send them into battle, and it's pretty cool. But I don't remember where I was going with the whole Eve thing. I forgot what I was talking about, so. Sorry. You can get pretty in depth with the game itself. Obviously. And it's not, you know. And I, going back to what I said before, it's not really designed to be something you can Down accomplish <laughs> in any kind of compact amount of time. It's has been going on for ten years, and I think they've kind of designed it so that you can't max out your character because they want you to play. And the funny thing is, PlayStation Four comes out this holiday season, so supposedly. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to try to continue with the PlayStation Three one, or if they're just going to try to bring it over to PlayStation 4. The rumor about PlayStation 4 is that it will be more like a PC, so, which is great because third-party producers and stuff, they've had a horrible time making games for the PlayStation 3 because it's technology that they're just not used to. So the PlayStation 4 will be more closer to what they're used to, so hopefully <laughs> it'll be easier to just make dust for the PlayStation 4. Cool. So that's dust. The other game I got because I... And actually, a new piece of information about um, Kurt Schilling's game that we just found out the other day. It's funny you remember I've showed this game a bunch of times. Reckoning. I haven't played that in months. Kingdoms of Amalur. They Kurt Schilling's company, um, Thirty Eight Studios, because he was number thirty eight for the Red Sox. Um, they went bankrupt. Rhode Island, big mess. You can read about it. The state of Rhode Island owns it. It's a nightmare. They actually sold this intellectual property. Somebody's buying it. And that's really cool because this was probably one of the better live it was the better live action role playing game I've ever played. Not turn based, so something you're actually doing moves and doing stuff in the game itself. I think the last thing like that that I saw you that interested in was probably Final Fantasy. But you didn't like that as much because it was turn it's turn based. Yeah, and it I was... didn't like it because it was turn based but at a random yeah. Uh, you'd level. Walk, yeah, you'd walk around and things would just kind of happen. At random. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Nuts. I mean, it was Final Fantasy, and they're coming out with a new one, I guess, soon. So. Sorry, not, it's not my favorite game. Not interested. So, But anyway, <sighs> because I really like this game, I decided to pick up Dragon's Dogma. This is Dark Arisen. This is the second, this is the expansion pack. For oh, okay. $40, this actually came in the original game. So I got less than a full price game, I got the original game plus the expansion, and it all came in one, which is really cool. My only problem with this game, if anyone's heard me talk about Dragon Age before, it's a party system. So you have your character, and you have to worry about four other people with you. And I'm not all that crazy about, because my guy's nasty right now, and I have all these like, other people that have like cloth, they're wearing like Sorry, rags. Sorry, your is showing. Yeah, they're wearing like rags. <laughs> My guy's like ripped. He's got like this awesome bow, and I spent all this money and all this stuff for him. It's all in game currency, obviously, not really. Money. But. That's right, we gotta save money. You know, I have this warrior that has like a wooden stick, and this is what she's using to go around and beat But they're people. nasty with their stick. But you got to create one of the. I get to create this really hot blonde chick that's traveling around with me, so. You get to like. I'm gonna knit a really hot guy. All the, uh. Proportions, you actually get to choose them. So that was that was pretty fun. <laughs> anyway, I will post pictures of her. <laughs> there it is. Didn't only took ten minutes to get grounded. Hit. <laughs> so, and it doesn't have to be. A ch and one of the cool things about this game is that you. Create I'm gonna create a guy, and I'm gonna make him have a really big foot awesome. size. <laughs> you know what they say about guys with big feet. They have really big socks. Damn it. Uh, the, the character, you get to create one character, and that is like your main kind of person, and then you get to hire other people. The other people that you hire are actually 
other characters, people that they created, other players. So that's kind of cool because everyone's kind of sharing all these characters. So that's kind of the cool part about the game. That and the graphics are really good. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Diablo, mm -hmm. kind of in 3D and it's a little bit more like Skyrim in terms of the graphics, not so much overhead How's like the music? Diablo. The music is really cool. Uh, it's Capcom, so if anyone's familiar with Devil May Cry, that's the kind of music. It's a little bit. It's got some Asian influence in terms of some of the sound and some some of the tones and stuff. So the music is really well done. But Does Seth like it? I brought it over. I don't think Seth got to play it, but I did tell him I was getting it. So I think that sounds very him. Yeah. So. He likes the party play. So in terms of video games, that's that's been it for me. So I've been playing video games. Oh my god. I have um, <laughs> fallen into the sugar rush. My, actually my boss's hole. wife tried to get me to play too. Yeah, I know, because she and I play instead yeah. of each other things. Yeah. Um, I get really mad. You get bitter. <laughs> sugar rush can be played on Facebook or it can be played on your smartphone or your computer. and Or all of the above. Yep. You can have multiple people profiles. She's um, like, here, beat this for me. No, I'm like playing, um, and she's like, yeah, me, no, I'm already beyond no, that one. No, I definitely didn't say beat this for me. I said, here, try this. No, you couldn't get past the part, and it was making you angry. So you had me. No, try that it. was on my phone. My phone is like my ultimate guy. See, so on my phone, what? my ultimate guy. That's like, you're you're like a player on. Oh, I thought you meant your uh, your affinity with your phone. No. Was like your ultimate guy. Shut up. Like this. Is, um. So. I wouldn't be surprised. On here, Pretty I'm at level, I think it's 30, you should talk. I think it's level 38, Candy Crush, which is low, comparatively. But please keep in mind that I've only been playing for about a week. So I've been trying to avoid it for months and months and months and months, and finally I was like, eh, I'm bored. Sorry, I'm, I'm stuck in level 29. And I'm only on like level 14 on the iPad. So, my problem with the game is that Yes, thank you, Katie. Um, is that P.S. No. My problem with the game <laughs> is that it, it's late. Um, I feel like it's trying to screw me. Like, it'll make suggestions like, oh, move this little blue candy over here and, and get rid of this little threesome over here. No, I can see that there are four in a row with a fifth one above it. Right? There's a big chocolate ball coming down here. Don't be messing with me. The game is trying to screw me. And if the jelly doesn't stop showing up in my levels, there's going to be hell to pay. You can tell my busy season is over because <laughs> I'm now playing video games. <laughs> so, I'm at level 39. And the jelly is ruining my life. And she still only played the one time when they were the zombies. We have not tried to go back into the world of zombies. I like it. That was a tough one. That game's tough. Just like you're still working on the washcloth, so... Yeah, two rows at a time. Yeah, two Every couple of weeks. Sorry. So, so before get we this. get into the knitting, we have a couple of thank yous. I'm exhausted just looking at it. It's... I weeded some stuff out. I'm showing you the best of the best. Two and a half months since we've recorded, I've accumulated some things. And you don't need to see all of it, because you've seen it elsewhere, in your own lives, coming into your own mailboxes, or online on Ravelry, people stashing it, or on other podcasts. You don't need to see it again. So first, I want to say thank you, because we had, as of this afternoon, which today is June 5th? Yes, Yes, because I was supposed to have jury duty. Um, we had 626 members, so thank you, all 626 awesome. of you, for sticking around. We didn't pod fade, we had a lot going on. Um, our daughter was essentially sick for a month. It was awful. And my washing machine went through a lot. And then I traveled. I went to Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania for a week. And then I was home for a week. And then I went to Baltimore slash DC for a week. I met up with my friend Emily and my best friend MJ flew in. And we had a great week. And I'll talk more about that later. And then I was home for a week. And then I went back to Philly for a week. And then in between all of that, I did nine events with 1,500 people at each of those events. And read 
thousands of applications. So, no offense, I had to make priorities. So I hope nobody's mad at us <laughs> or upset, but I had to choose. And I chose my health and my family, so sorry. But we have some thank yous because during that time period, I met my minimum goal for the Susan G. Komen Boston 3-day, which is this coming July 26th, 27th, 28th, which is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Please come and cheer us on if you can. It's worth it for the experience. Seeing all of those walkers, it's so powerful. Seeing all of the survivors and all the people cheering everybody on, it's amazing. So for anybody who donated or sent the link on to others to donate or even thought about donating, thank you. I appreciate it. I have an entire list of people to thank, but my thoughts are that none of them gave me permission to give their name out. So, uh, you if know you who you are. You know who you are. And I want to thank you. Um, on my page, which is www.the3day.org backslash go to backslash meliabella, M-E-L-I-A-B-E-L-L-A, -E -L -L 2013, on the right hand side of the screen, which would be this side for you, uh, you can actually see the people who have chosen to have their name be visible. So if you'd like to see who donated or give them props, it's right there. Um, I'd like to thank Stitch by Jess Lou. Uh, she was selling Fight Like a Girl bags, and uh, the, a portion of those proceeds were donated. I'd also like to thank Heather from Highland Handmaids, her colorway, um, which I think was also called Fight Like a Girl. Um, she donated a portion of those proceeds. No, it was a pattern, excuse me. Sorry, Heather. Her Level Up socks, she uh, took the proceeds divided by three and donated to two other groups as well. Um, so thank you, Heather. And I want to thank Acme, uh, which is a printing company. They make the Knitters for Knockers bags, uh, which you can go to the link in the show notes if you'd like to purchase one. And a percentage of those proceeds came to us as well. So thank you all for your support. Uh, this is the second time I've done the three-day walk, and I'm currently $10 shy of $2,600, which is more than I could have That's ever awesome. asked for. So thank you so much. There's news on that front as well. Um, Susan G. Komen has decided to cut seven cities for 2014. Sean has made me promise that I wasn't going to walk in 2014 anyway. He and my parents had an intervention at the 5K that I ran after a weekend of alumni concerts at my high school for the retirement of my high school music director, in which I was in every single part. Um, they had an intervention to make me stop doing things. So. And they made me promise that I wouldn't participate in 2014 in the three-day. Doesn't mean I'm not going to do all this stuff. Um, so it was kind of like a last hurrah. So I'm glad I'm signed up for this year. Um, the other thing that Sean encouraged me to do was to join a team. So Knitters for Knockers will still be in my heart, but I was the only person on the team. I was the only person walking. Um, there are people who had expressed interest, but for whatever their personal reasons are, didn't commit. And with, I think it's 56 days from today, uh, until we step off at 6 o'clock in the morning, it's a really long walk. It's 60 miles, it's 20 miles a day, and while Sean's going to be there to support me in water, Gatorade, Vaseline for my feet, whatever it is that I need, you need more than that along the way. So last year when Bryn and I walked, we met a team. Um, that's local to us. We actually knew about them before walking. We read about them online and they're called the Tough Warrior Princesses and they have accepted us onto their team. Um, they were the 10th highest uh, fundraising team as of 9.30 this morning and then at 9.35 they jumped to number 8 because of me and because of you. So thank you. Um, so I'm excited. There's 13 of us walking. Um, Maureen, who was a team member, was the first person on their team that I met in person last year who was amazing, and I found out that she died two weeks ago from breast cancer. So I, I haven't known her my whole life. I barely knew her, but she was inspirational to say the least. Um, I'm going to have a link to the video for their team that was shot in 2010. It's called Walk Like a Princess, and their team is actually sponsored by New Balance. And, um, she's amazing. She was an amazing person, and I'm honored to be able to walk on that team. So, And they welcomed us with open arms. I can't say enough. 
so it's exciting. It's very exciting. Um, so if you can, come out and support us. If you can't, I would really love to see you supporting us by putting pictures up on Instagram, on Twitter, on uh, we'll open up a, a thread on Ravelry, but I won't be able to see that until I get to my hotel, which I purchased with reward points uh, for each evening. I'll log in and just check in and keep a thread going. There's also abilities for you uh, to, whether you donate it or not, to send a letter. There's a post office address, um, and I know Diane of Knittables got it last year because she sent me a letter. I'll have to ask her how she obtained the address, but you can send me mail. means so much. Like you're thinking, okay, it's a stamp, it's a letter, whatever. Those letters got me through the three day. I carried them right in my fanny pack. Yes, you wear a fanny pack. And read them at water stops and waiting for the porta potty and waiting in the shower line. And they meant so much. So for those of you who took the time last year to write MJ, um, Diane, it, they were amazing letters. So thank you. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say, well, we wanted to say thank you for was while Ella was really, really, really sick, and it was um, during probably the peak of my busy season, I got a piece of mail, and it it brought me to tears. I opened it, and I was actually sobbing. So it was a beautiful package, and it was from um, Kim, who, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, but she's from Craft Stash, which is a podcast, and her username is Crayoli. Crayoli. Not, I'm not sure, and I'm sorry, I haven't heard it pronounced. Uh, but it was a beautiful card. Totally me. Mm -hmm. I love those colors. And inside was a bunch of things. Um, but the first thing I saw was this little book. And I was like, well, I know that. And it's from Mary Bell in New York City, which is a chocolatier. Sorry, that's her address. Um, and then I opened this, and it said whiskey on it. And it showed little truffles. And it was an entire was an entire box of truffles because in the last month and a half we ate them. Thank you so much. It, it was huge that week. So to open this and the thought and the friendship that was extended, thank you so much. Um, also in there were little tiny mini skeins um, from Sheep Dreamery which I've been following on Instagram and not purchasing from but that is about to change. And it's two little mini skeins, and it says It's Glitz, which is a merino nylon Stellina, and I believe that that's the pink with little specks. And then this rainbowy one, which is Aurora Borealis. And it's exactly the type of twist that I love. So thank you so much. I'm looking forward to making some little items with these. I'll show you more on that later. So thank you so much. It was so kind. Sean came in the door, and I ran up to and he's like, can I have I one? And I said, no. I'm just kidding. I, I didn't get one for some. about a week. That's not true. Um, that's pretty true. I well, I mine. left. I left the next day. That's why. Oh, okay. And I was gone I for a I... week. <laughs> They're really good. So, thank really you good. so, 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 so much. So, let's get to some knitting. Uh, first, I finished a bunch of stuff. Uh, so, the next thing that I finished was this little hat. And this was um, knit from... Madeline Tosh vintage on the bottom in the night bloom colorway which was left over from a sweater that I knit and then on the top was leftover uh, Malbrigo Rios in the lettuce colorway and you can see the designer information and the needle I used on the link below in the show notes or on my Ravelry page. I believe it was a US 7 but all that information is on there. And this is for one of my rookie's daughters. I need to mail it out ASAP. My rookie's from Drumline. The next thing that I finished was a pair of socks. Um, and this was knit out of All Things Heather in the Tink colorway. And I knit these using US 2's. I did Magic Loop, and it's the RPM pattern. And these are blocked. I'm not sure if I showed them the last time we recorded. So those are done. And then, and then, and then, and then. Um, our niece's birthday, um, who Project Sweet Caroline was established in memory of, uh, was in April, and I knit a preemie cap in her memory, and we actually just sent out over 200 preemie caps, and this time they went to 
Beth Israel Deaconess Children's NICU in Boston. Our high school friend Emily had triplets that were in that NICU and she is now a baby holder? Baby cuddler? Cuddler. It's a really cute name. She's I mean, a baby a cuddler. cuddler in her free time with her triplet boys who just turned one. <laughs> and so she's got a really nice little network of NICU nurses who actually travel from Boston NICU to Boston NICU. So we're hoping to next get a shipment into Boston Children's, uh, which was actually one of the major locations for the uh, marathon runners um, to be transported to for the children who were affected by that bombing. So if you have any leftover yarn that you're not using to knit barn raising squares or hexapuffs or anything like that and you want to do a preemie cap, please uh, PM me on Ravelry. I would love to give you our address that we can send another big shipment of at least three freezer bags full of tiny little hats. If you want to knit bigger hats, there are definitely larger babies in the NICU. Mm -hmm. Emily said that at Deaconess Beth Israel they have um, up to one and sometimes even two-year-olds in that NICU. It's not just uh, preemie infants. So. There are micro preemies. There are as well. So there are lots of different sizes in it. Yeah, if we this have is a, a micro preemie hat. If we have a way to link you to the different sizing and all the different requirements we do. Yep. for... It's in our group under Project Sweet Caroline. Well, that's how, how they should be washed and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So. They do prefer uh, to have superwash merino because it can be washed and decontaminated easily. And also if for whatever reason there were a fire, it doesn't melt. So that's what they would prefer. Um, if they do have babies that are hypersensitive, they're not wearing these hats. They're yeah. wearing hospital-issued, sterilized, not touched by human hands hats. Right. So we don't need to be worrying about plastic versus no. animal. So this is what they prefer. I also finished these. I was at a conference last week for work uh, up in Boston, well, north of Boston, at, um, where was I? Endicott. And I finished my another crap. Right, are you having performance no, anxiety? I'm okay. Soft blocker performance anxiety? No. <laughs> so these are my another crafty girl. My sock is just fine. In the gamut base. No, in the strong sock base in the gamut colorway. And I knit Hermione's everyday sock again. <laughs> and uh, I have really large feet. I have a women's size 11. So these took a little while. But I finished from the heel turn? I think the heel to the toe from the ride from work to, the to that evening. Yeah. At 11 o'clock I texted you. And we left at like 2 in the afternoon and I got that far. That's a lot. So exciting. Um, so I'm kind of in a sock place right now. All I want to knit is socks. And I think it's because it was a hundred degrees the entire time I was well, on. Well, it's, it's that they're light. You can actually finish them. Yeah, and they're just in this part of my hand. Mm -hmm. They're not on my arms or in my lap or I'm not moving it, moving it, moving it, which is sweaters you for me. You have to have a super big bag. Yeah, I've been lugging that bag around. And this is how much I had left. I had a ton of gamut left. So this is going to be repurposed for two different things. I'm not going to show it there because they're a surprise. Wow. Sorry. Oh, and this is in my Jessalou TARDIS bag, which on the inside it's bigger. is bigger. It's bigger. Um, space, which obviously means it's bigger. And this is my Another Crafty Girl, which my favorite thing, and this is so small and it's weird that I really like it as much, but when she gives you the the yarn on the tag, she'll write the colorway, and then she'll write when it was created. So it's kind of like a born on date for my uh, yarn. <laughs> like a beanie baby. Which can kind of be bad because then you're like, this is really my stash for how long? Oh, that's actually not a bad idea. We should start dating everything. No, no, let's not. <laughs> let's not do that at all. And give it a half life, a shelf life. You know, use it by this date, it gets donated. <gasps> okay, let's do that for all the video games you haven't played that are taking up that cabinet. That cabinet? What do you mean? It's over on this side. That cabinet! I, there are some games in there I don't even have a system that can play them anymore. <laughs> I don't want to hear it from you. Uh, so <laughs> the next thing I finished was Ella asked for a sweater for her birthday. Uh, her birthday is the end of May, so I started the sweater way ahead of time. It has not been blocked yet, and that's because it's a little bit too big as it is now. Um, and this is called the... 
Petite Facile sweater and it came from oh shoot it came from Interweave Knits Winter 2011 and the button is from Fiberspace in Alexandria, Virginia. Their staff is amazing. You have to go there if you're any, even if you're, within an hour, maybe even two hours. You have to stop there. They're amazing. And I knit it out of Shepherd's Wool in the lilac colorway, which I bought quite a while ago in Michigan. So she loves it, and I will block it probably at the end of the summer so I get a few more inches um, out of it. But she loved the little button. And it was a really interesting construction. Uh, I don't want to give too much away because it's a published pattern, but you start at one side and you knit up and over, and then you pick up the sleeves. It was really interesting. Um, I would like to knit a smaller size uh, for an infant. I knit the two-year-old size but went up a needle size. And it said to use worsted, but Shepherd's Wool is almost a heavy worsted in my opinion because it's very lofty and squishy but she loved it and you can go on our project page to see a picture of her in it and I'm sure whether in the beginning or the end of the show there'll be a picture of her in it as well. She'll be excited to have that back. I also finished and by finished I mean the knitting is finished. I have not woven in the ends. <clears throat> it has not been blocked and that is because I finished it during a five day rainstorm uh, yeah. and then it was 110 degrees. Yeah. We've had some very weird weather, yeah. like frost warning on a Sunday and Tuesday, it, scrambling to get the air conditioners in because we can't breathe. Yeah, so it's been crazy. The last month has been crazy weather here. So this is my Ho Aloha, and I don't know if you can see it all. Can't see me yeah, anymore, but that us. doesn't matter. Uh, and this is I knit. I need to remember the size, sorry. I'm Could be a little big now, huh? It is indeed. Um, I chose to go with short sleeves because I used yarn that I purchased a year and a half ago off of the Madeline Tosh website. Just made the cut. Um, they don't even make this yarn anymore. It was a limited creation, so I'm so glad I have so much of it. This is the Heritage Will Erin in the Dahlia colorway. And I only used two and a half skeins. I have six skeins of this, and this is a heavy Aran weight yarn, and the whole Aloha, which was a knit along that I finished well after everybody else. Which is fine. It's totally fine. Um, I knit this on a seven, so it's dense, but not in a bad way. It has a perfect um, fabric. And I knit the 42, because that's the size that I was <laughs> when I started the knit along, which I cast on on February 13th um, and I finished it on May 9th so it's already almost been a month since it's been finished so the issue that I'm having is that I really like the way that it fits through my body I'm very happy of where it hits it's going to be very shapely very pleased as you know if you've seen the previous episode I had a very dyslexic moment and instead of having this panel oh, face out it faces in which I have decided isn't a bad thing um, this is where I was the last time we showed the sweater on our uh, podcast, so I knit quite a bit from there and then the sleeves. Um, my problem is that because of the size that I chose to knit, the arms are monstrous. I will show you. Not even blocked. I've got all of that that's extra. So... Um, because I chose to go with a short sleeve and because I like the length of the body, the issue is that there was too much on the increase here, but I like the way that all the shaping went through my bust. So what I'm going to do after I block it is take in the underarm, and that's why all of these ends are still here because I'm going to use the ends that are here to do this. I'm going to kind of double over the circular part of the sleeve, which will bring it in two inches because you fold it over, which is perfect. So that's what I'm going to do. And I am excited because this sweater looks banging with leggings. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> but it is much too hot to wear it now, so there's no rush to do the 
finishing finish work, um, especially because I'm still losing inches. So to do a tailoring job essentially on the underarms when I'm going to have to maybe take it in even further would be silly. Yeah. I could also do some surgery, but I don't want it to bunch in this part of the under. Snip snip? No, yeah, I don't want to go the whole way down. Yeah, because right. I liked the shape of down here. Like surgery like. That's what I meant, but I'm saying is if I take if I take area out of here, it makes things bunch up mm -hmm. here when you reconnect them. So I think the my plan thing. will work better, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer because I'm getting there. So, hold on one second. Dear MJ, go away. And that's because you're going to be terrified. As, oh my god. And Deb, if you're watching, you're not going to like this either. I had to change the color. The kids like me to change the eyes. So, I fell down. Hard. Uh, Ella's birthday uh, was the end of May, and she wanted a dolly. And so all of a sudden, I was looking at dollies again, because my friend Amy and all of her beautiful photographs took me down this path last summer when I had free time at work and I fell in love with her doll collection and so I think it was the very first real slow day at work I decided yeah let's go on eBay and buy some things and so it's never a good choice for a slow day I um got a great deal bid on some dolls <gasps> this is Hadley Go ahead, be creeped out. I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, this is not the outfit she came with. I changed it. And it's I also creepier than her hair smells good. I washed it because it was all yucky from the packaging. So this is Hadley, and she's wearing a February lady sweater that I knit her. And the arms are a little long, so I need to do some surgery and rip back the arms. And I was going. Some people to, like long arms, though. They do. Diane does, especially. Um, and I was going to get a closure, but I kind of like it open. And she's not wearing shoes right now. I took them off. And her Converse are on their way from Malaysia. <sighs> Little tiny Converse. So um, Ella's uh, doll is on the way, and I think her name is Vivian, but we're not sure yet. Her eyes change colors. Ready? For oh my God. That's not creepy <laughs> at all. <laughs> There's pink ones. There they are. <laughs> It's just creepy. I'm sorry. It's just creepy. So I knit that, and the uh, the alterations that I made were instead of doing a make one for the shoulder increases, I did yarn overs, which fit her perfect. So if you have a um, a 12 inch doll and it has the Lucas style body, it fits. If you know what I'm talking about, that's okay. The only other thing that's finished is one of Sean's Rhinebeck socks for Rhinebeck 2013. Ooh. So every year when we go to Rhinebeck, Sean picks out a skein of sock yarn. I don't have sock blockers for your big feet. I was going to say, you need bigger sock blockers. For your feet. Uh, so this is one, and this is Socks That Rock Medium Weight in the Fall on Tap colorway. And Sean has a size 12 men's foot when it comes to sock measurements. And I do a 7-inch cuff, which I count... Or, a one inch cuff, six inch leg, two inch heel, and then I go out towards the toe. And um, I knit from here, which is the top of the heel, to the toe in less than two days at work. Summertime is here. <laughs> uh, so that was great. I finished the toe this morning. And cast on for sock number two, which I'm already into the leg. Because you're crazy. It's slow. And this is living in my Tangerine Designs coffee cups bag, which has beans on the inside. And yes, Suzanne, I'm matching everything, because that's how I do. Are you happy with them? I'm very happy. Do you like how they fit? They fit very comfortably. Hooray, Ryan back socks. So other things that I'm working They're on... They're approved cabin wear. <laughs> yeah. Of Rhinebeck 2013. <laughs> so other things that I'm working on, currently knitting wise, I started... I frogged my other Narragansett. I is was this bag new? Yes, it is. I'll talk about it in a minute. Oh, yeah. 
So I started a Narragansett in November out of the Flutterby's colorway of the Miss Babs Yowza What a Skein that I purchased at Rhinebeck. And it was, even though I was alternating skeins, it was pooling really weird. Just when you got angry yet. I got mad, yeah. yeah. It has all twisted rib, so I had invested some time, and then within the increases in the arms, there's lace work. It's like a little miffed. Like, I even took the time to alternate skeins, and it was a beast, and was pulling like crazy. Like, I don't mind pulling. It was a hot mess. So I decided to start over, and I had purchased the Yaza Wetta skein in the sea glass colorway. Is it sea foam? Stand by. Beach glass, not even close. Whoa. And I purchased three skeins of it because at that time I thought that I might want to knit the. It's a cardigan. It has buttons, <laughs> narrowing it down. Um, regardless, my size at that time it would not have been flattering. So I changed my mind and I cast on for a size smaller, which was very exciting. Narragansett. And sorry, it's a little. Been hanging out in the bag. Um, and here it is. I have finished the body. Oh, I'll show you the front. I have finished the body and I did do an extra set of decreases uh, for waist shaping. And then in the waist, they tell you to do a yarn over and that's to increase the shaping back down for over your hips in the hip detail. And they say not to do it down into the ribbing. I liked the way that it looked. This and that will help. Yeah. I really liked the way that it looked going all the way down. So I did it. So right now I'm at the part uh, where you pick up the stitches for the sleeve. And uh, there are sleeve decreases which coincide with the lace uh, that goes under the arm. And this is coming back. I finished the body part evening everybody was drinking at the conference, um, and decided that I didn't want to have to worry about decreases in conference sessions. Mm -hmm. So um, I had started to pick up the sleeve in the conference sessions, and that's when I said forget it and went over to and worked on a different project. So just made it easier. I should have brought two pairs of socks, because I finished my gamut sock the first night, and then I had to tote this bag, which I adore, but all over a canvas in 102 degree heat yeah. was a bit much. So this was my Mother's Day present, and this is a sweater size bag from Tangerine Designs, and I adore it. Here's the handle, which is polka dot, beautiful yellow, two, three different colors of yellow, flowers with gray, and then the inside is big polka dots, and it is huge. That's what she's So Sean bought this for me when I was on my way back up to like the northeast, no, I, I was on my way back up to middle of nowhere Pennsylvania and the update was happening at 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the evening yeah. after baseball and I had to get in the car because I was going seven hours away and I had, I was supposed to take the train but I decided I wanted to stay because it was opening day for mm -hmm. baseball and then I drove. So I got to the hotel at around 11. Mm, it's close to midnight. And Sean texted me and let me know that he scored my bag. Oh yeah. I was all over that. He was a ninja. Thank you, because I love that bag. And things that I'm working on cross-stitch wise. I've made some progress. Not super recently, but since the last podcast most definitely. This is the Frosted Pumpkin. That was yummy. Is that Sounds yummy. Say? Frosted Pumpkin uh, Woodland Knit Along. I've got one month complete. Um, I finished February. And I'm very happy with it. And when I was in Maryland and Washington, D.C., I went to a cross-stitch store. It was an entire store of cross-stitch with my best friend, who's this is all her fault. And I got this little needle nanny, which is B. Because my name means Bumblebee and Len. And 
Hi guys, I'm inserting this into our next episode uh, since it is a project that I finished but I have to give as a gift. Uh, my boss at work is expecting and I wanted to have a chance to show you the project. Suzanne who is knitting Nirvana, she has a video podcast and she's on Ravelry and she designs some patterns here and there and she's been really inspired and uh, making a bunch of new patterns and this is her newest one. It's called the Chevron Chapeau, and it is currently on Ravel, so you definitely want to get on and grab one of these. But I knit mine out of Malabrigo Rios leftovers that I had. The green is lettuce, and the blue slash purple, because it pulled on each side, one side blue, one side purple, which is perfect, um, is Indesita. And they're both Rios, which is washable. And I knit the newborn size, which looks huge when I put it close to, just the way that the iMac <laughs> takes pictures, but if I put it next to my head, you can see it's actually quite small. Uh, pattern was super simple, super fun. I knit it in less than two hours easily. Um, I started it one night, knit on it for maybe an hour, and then the next day finished it up. So here it is, nice and close. And this was serious potato chip knitting. I could not stop knitting this cute little hat. And then I love the decreases on the top, they kind of pinwheels. Sorry, I'll hold it steady for you. How cute is that hat? It is so cute. Cute, cute, cute. There it is. So if you would like a chevron chapeau, you should go over to Ravelry and download the pattern. Use Suzanne. This cute little hat. Okay, so for the on our plate section, we've been eating really clean. Um, we're going to do more recipes next week on exactly what types of new recipes we've been doing. But the one indulgence that I allow myself and that Sean definitely allows himself is coffee in any way that we want it. So we get our beans from Shelburne Falls Coffee Roasters, which is ibuycoffee.com. And if you want uh, sugar maple nut, you can actually call and get it. But we purchase the coconut toasted coconut and then we cold brew it to make iced coffee here at home so that we can have that quickly rather than stopping with two kids going in and purchasing waiting in line. Uh, it's a really busy area. It's one of the busiest streets in our small town so it's hard to get the kids in and out. So for cold brewing in volume you take two ounces of grounds uh, that are fresh and you place them into a pitcher of water that is two quarts and it's iced it's cold water and you allow it to sit in that cold water covered for 12 hours you can do it during the day while you're at work you can do it overnight and then 12 hours later you actually put it through a strainer or colander through a coffee filter and allow it to filter through that that takes about 15 maybe 20 minutes and then I just put it do you mind grabbing the spouted container um, I grabbed a spout purchased a spouted container from Target. Don't buy them from like a third party retailer like TJ Maxx because they leak, but this is what I got from Target and I love it. It doesn't leak at all. So this is what's left. Um, and four quarts or a gallon is about what fits in there. So I'll do two quarts at a time and usually I try to right when I finish the first uh, canister, I'll start the next one right away and drain it when I get home. So. Uh, we add to that cream and a little bit of Trader Joe's chocolate syrup sometimes, um, or just cream. I don't put sugar in my coffee, but sometimes I will add maple syrup. And it's the real maple syrup, not like Aunt Jemima or Log Cabin or something. So that's our recipe for this week. Um, we do pour it over ice. I usually put two cubes maybe, but it's because I use double wall canisters. So enjoy. The trip. My friend Lois, who owns Knitting's My Bag and makes knitting bags, and now, thank you very much, cross stitch bags. I asked her if she would create something that I could fit my entire frame, <coughs> pardon me, into that had a snap and some kind of a handle. And I chose the bee fabric, do you sense the theme? And she came up with the design otherwise. Uh, there is interfacing in it, it does have a bee button. It opens up, and on the inside are little dots. Like honeycomb. Yeah, and it's about an inch or maybe an inch and a half in width. And it holds my 9x9 frame. And then on the inside, she put a little loop so that I could put 
my binder ring and that's what I put whatever current square I'm working on I put my floss for that in there so thank you Lois I adore it and when she sent this to me she also sent a letter that said the next time we want to do and along with a giveaway that she would like to donate one of her bags. So Lois, thank you so much. We will be in touch in the future about that. As of right this minute, we don't have a knit along planned that would have a gift. So I'm I'm saving it for a rainy day, as you will. So thank you so much, Lois. I'm so happy with this. So, so, so happy. And it traveled really well. We took it on the road with me quite a bit. So thank you, Lois. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I made some purchases. And in the interest of time, you're not gonna hear about all of them. So the newest thing that I got. Oh no. Oh. Pom pom down. Can we display that? My newest purchase is from Gourmet Stash which is GourmetStash.com, and the owner is Kate Blaney, and she is on Instagram, and that is how I found her. She started posting these little pictures of tiny little balls of roving, which she calls tribbles. Uh, I knew you'd nice. get it. <laughs> I didn't get it because I've never, okay, I've seen Star Trek, but I never got into Star Trek. We're remedying that. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, no, this is, this, is, this is development. Right, it is. So... I had to have these. She was posting pictures of this update, and I said, these are mine. And I went there for ones that aren't even these. They're ones that had a little pink, a little bit of green, and then I opened it, and they were like, BAM! So these are, I don't even know how many ounces each. Two ounces each? It's, that's troubling and, to me, that you don't know how like, much you're buying. I need that one, and I need that one, and anyway. precious. And then she sent a beautiful letter, and it was attached to this little baker's twine with a hand-spun yarn pom-pom. Oh my god. Thank you, Kate. And thank you for your note. It was so kind. And you were fangirling? No, I'm fangirling. These are amazing. Amazing! Oh, and she also sent a little lavender sachet. So I hope you get one with your order, because I love it. Sachet. Okay. Oh boy. I better hurry up. He's losing it. I went to some festivals. I went to went to all this class. Connecticut Sheep and Wool, and it was <laughs> my first Saturday off in nine weeks, maybe ten. And I was like, I'm gonna take two kids to Connecticut Sheep and Wool. This is all I bought. I love it. It is four ounces, and I purchased it from. Spin a bit, who is Cheryl, and they are out of Middleborough, Mass. And you can see them on Facebook and Etsy. It's spin a bit, D I T. It's so pretty. So it's a blanket one that you have to unfold and pull apart, and it's going to be so fun. So thanks. And then I went to. Sounds like the lightning round. Then I went to. Oh, wait! Okay, stop. When you bought me the bag yep. from oh, Tangerine Design, right. I was like, I, I need oh, really small. I need a wooden mustache. And Sean's like, A? They come in sets of three. I don't know. And so he's like, I'll buy you a set. What are these for again? They're for this. Oh my god, I just went in my mouth. I can't really... <laughs> it's a choking hazard! Do you need the I Heimlich? Know. Do you need the Heimlich? You can't so trust me. Put these... these back. Look at that. That's really I know! Cool. So, Sean's nephew, our nephew, Gavin, turns one on Sunday? Pretty close. So, I bought him this cute little outfit. It's so preppy, it hurts. But I want to knit him Dandy Sir Cephalopod because he's got the mustache! Mustache! It kind of looks like the, uh... Peanut? Um, Mr. Monopoly Peanut? Monopoly guy. Oh, and the Monopoly guy, yep. So I got some of those. And P.S. I love her business cards. Yeah, those are really good. Oh, it's not a business card. It talks about wraps per inch and what... Oh, I just 
love that. I wish we had thought of that for our business cards. It's so cute. The cat is getting more comfortable. Somewhere in this grand scheme of two and a half months, I fell down. And Again. a lollipop yarn update. So that's lollipop yarn. How cute is that? It reminded me of our dishes. Mm-hmm. And all the colors that they came in. We have Fiesta wear. And so I had to buy it. I didn't knit it yet because I wanted you to see it. So I was holding off just for you. And this is called Lazy Day, which is five rows of sky, five rows of grasshopper, five rows of hay, five rows of blossom, and five rows of hammock. Which sounds fabulous. And it's superwash and nylon. And she is on Etsy as Lollipop Yarn. My friend Nancy dyes some yarn. She made me feel like she wasn't going to do it forever, and so You're tearing up a little bit. I got a little nervous because I was like, but I only have two colors and there are two more that I want, so I ordered them. They're very you. I know. And so this one is Lupine, which is two different colors of green, two different colors of purple. Love it. And this one is Anchorage, nope, yes, Anchorage Autumn. And still in my stash, I have Russian Fairy Tale, which you bought me for Christmas. So I have all of the colors of hers that I that like. you want. That I want. And they are safe. And then I went to... Maryland. Maryland, that's right. And our first stop... MJ and I both flew in at the same time. And my first stop... It was like a shock and awe. Was... The cross stitch store. And this was like 10 minutes from the airport. That might be the name of the episode. Shock and awe. Yeah, no, it's thank you. No, oh, you're welcome. Excuse me. Oh, no. look, the receipt. Oh, crap. Don't look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so they do, they do a cross stitch of the month club. And I bought three, the three Month's that had been worth. out at the time. And this is from right Little House Needleworks. <laughs> and they're little pillows. I'm not making pillows. I'm going to do the three of them eventually. And frame them in a three... A three... Frame. Frame. Thing. Frame. A three frame frame. A triple frame. A tri-frame. Anyway, so um, there is Hope, which is number one. Which has a sheep and the word Hope and some trees and awesomeness. And it also has a button. Number two was Little Sheep Virtue, and it was love. It has two sheep, a heart, some flowers, and a button. Which I'll show you in a and the third one is Little Sheep Virtue number three, which is peace. And it has a tree. This one was my favorite with fish. And a button. And these are the buttons, which are made from Fimo. One is like a poinsettia, a bird, and then a white flower. And those go on each of them. And I purchased these at the Stitching Post, which is the-stitching-post.com. So you can actually go log on or call, once you get their number off the website, and purchase each of these months or see which ones they've gone through, because it's now already months later. And there are more out, and I haven't seen them. But um, my best friend may or may not have purchased the year. Um, so I bought that, as well as some linen to do them on, which is mocha linen. So see, I'm going to go like this. Right. Yeah. Price tag is on that one, okay. <sighs> Oh, the battery died in the flip. <laughs> Too much yarn. Uh, so I was saying that I went to Maryland and we went to Fiberspace as well as, oh crap, what was the other place? Loop? Stitch? Skein? Loop. I don't know, but the camera's up there. Okay, so we went there and um, at Fiberspace I purchased a sweater's worth of the most beautiful green yarn. It is pretty green. That is accurate. It is so accurate. And it is from the Fiberists in Audubon Sport in colorway emerald. And the cool part is that they put the property for emerald. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. What do you mean the property? Like what it would be 
Oh, in you mean science. Like the element. That's in it. science. It's eleven thirty, and the battery died, and you're a jerk. <laughs> in science talk. I was an English major. <laughs> I was just great. It's so, elemental property. Thank yeah, you. You're um, welcome. That's what I bought, and because it's sitting right here. How cute is he? Oh my god. How cute is he in the baseball? Oh, he's the cutest. And that's all I bought. Um, I wanted to buy all sorts of things, but Where did nothing. Where come from then? We're going to talk about it in a second. Um, none of the things were the right color or the right amount, so that was tough. Um, actually, I need that bag. And then I went to Mass Sheep and Wolf. And my friends Leslie and Susan drove up from New Jersey. Enablers. And uh, I also saw my friend Sheila and Jess and Amy and Wendy and Lisa uh, while we were there. But I spent the day with Susan and Leslie. And I, at some point, bought this from Jess Lou. It may have been at the Webb's tent sale. Thanks. And um, the inside is so cute. By the way, it's a Jess Lou bag and it's a wedge. Thank you, Jess Lou, because I prefer wedges. Love, 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 love. You just said I prefer wedges. Wedges. Wedges for all. Not wedges. 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 And I went to the Slunky Eclectic booth, and I bought some yak. That was the first place I went. <laughs> it's a yak. It's a yak. Um, and this is in the Something Else colorway, and it's a 50-50 blend yak silk, and it was $16 an ounce. Yup. Oh, that's so accurate. This camera, why aren't we recording on the Mac? That is epic. So this is going to be something for the neck. Like a warmer? Mm-hmm. Or I'm just going to wear it like see, this. See, the problem is, now that you can see yourself in the recording, you just <laughs> look at goofy. the shit and rub it all over your face. Uh, so I bought that. Can you do that again? Nope. Oh, God. Screensaver. <laughs> Did you see the panic? So then Matt helped me choose this. This is the Thunderstorm colorway, and it's two oh, yeah. ounces of silk hankies, which is enough to do a pair of mittens. Is this the silk? Yeah. This the, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Look at that. So this is what it looks like when you knit it up. You pull. This is weird. You pull the hanky apart and it comes into yarn and it has a very long staple so you draft it until you get the thickness of yarn that you want. I hope you can hear that ripping, it's so awesome. And so these end up being like super warm. Oh, I'm so excited. Now I just want to knit mittens. Um, and so this is enough to do a pair of mittens. So it's only two ounces but that's a lot. It's one end. You know what, I'm just going to say that this episode is more like me than ever before. Probably. <laughs> Get back in there. It's going to rain the next two days. Maybe I'll just make mittens. And then, no, and then I bought some little Notions pouches from Desilu. And these are going to be donated to... Our friends who have the JEHH Foundation, um, which is the 5K that I ran a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, they're doing a golf tournament. Yep, with a uh, silent auction. So I'm doing fuzz. I'm doing a I cord headphone, and they'll go in one of these, and the other one I'll keep because they're awesome. And that's it. I bought some yarn, but I'm unsure, so I'll just show you the color. Isn't that pretty? I'm not sure what's going to happen with it. I've heard some things, so I'm glad I picked a light color, and I know how to reset dye if it comes down to it, so that is what it is. We received a book that I'm not going to review because I am not great at crochet, but this book was written by... A neighbor of ours, this person oh, lived yeah. in between us in college, in the room right in between mine and Sean's, and her name is Megan Cranier. Cranier? I never could say it right. And she is an artist. She actually works for DreamWorks and helped to create many movies, but our favorite of the many movies um, 
is How to Train Your Dragon, and she's working on the second one right now. And so she has been working on this book with Martingale Press, and it came out about a week ago. Go away, screensaver. And it's called Crochet a Zoo. And look at how cute! Fun toys for baby and you. I would want all of these in my office. They are so adorable. Oh, Megan's in the back! There she is. This is Megan. Megan was in the marching band with us. And that's her little boy. And for Halloween one year, she made him into an Ewok. So cute. So the entire book is full of zoo animals. And she did autograph it and draw on it because she's an artist. And her thank you card is the penguins who are eating a fish. So what we're going to do is... I'm going to page through a couple, just so you can see how cute. These are the accessories. This is zoo food, which is made out of felt. I could do this all day long. You crochet it, I'll make zoo food. And I'm good. All right. I can hand sew like nobody's business, but crochet is tough for me. Oh my gosh, it's the zoo workers. Look at the zoo keepers. And... I didn't let Matt and Ella look at this because, <laughs> because I didn't want them to bend the pages or anything, but since it's going to be a gift for you. you got to see their butts. This is the primate section. There's their butts. Their little hearts. So what we're going to do is open a thread in our group, and we'll leave it open for two weeks. And I would prefer that you only enter if you crochet. Because that's facing. It's a crochet book. I know. Oh, this one's my favorite. This is the first one I saw her working on. She does have a Facebook group. It's called MK Designs, I think. Um, and you can join it on Facebook because she does release more patterns. She's come out with two more animals. Um, a flamingo and a wildebeest since the book was published. Uh, and I would like for you to say an animal that you would like to see her design. So obviously not one of the ones that we're listing here. And in two weeks we will pick a winner and I will mail it out to you, um, what's it called? Media Mail. And you'll get it as soon as I can get it to you. Look at the seals. So again, please only... Put your name in if you crochet. Please only enter once. You must be a member of the group. I want the whole family. Oh my god. I'm not good at this on the computer. Look at how cute. Look at the emotion in their little bushy eyebrows. Oh my god. They're so stinking cute. I love the dead fish. So, 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 so. Well done, Megan. Crochet a zoo. She's already working on book number two as well as patterns for Crochet Today, which is the magazine. And there you go. Here's the back. So, I know I forgot a hundred things. We'll be recording again soon. Hopefully within a week. So we can get the rest of it in. Yeah. And anything else new? I have to dye yarn because I have... I have, more, I have to buy more games. I have um, the last shipment of Trifecta is me. So... Oh my god, Assassin's Creed 4. I even forgot to talk about it. Oh, I'll save it next for next time. time. Next time. He's a friggin' S pirate. Arr. I think we talked yeah. about the last time we Maybe. recorded. We did. It's gonna be sweet. So I won't be able to show the yarn that I dye, but if I have time to dye extra yarn, there might be a tiny shop update. So... Uh, you can find us on Instagram. That's the biggest social media for me right now is Instagram. I'm on there all day. I'm also on Facebook. Um, if on Instagram I have a private account, if you don't put in your profile on Instagram or if you're private and I can't see your pictures that you're a knitter or a fiber artist of some kind, I'm not going to okay your friendship. So in your profile put something so or even your profile picture that you're a knitter. That helps. Um, or I'll friend request you first <laughs> and we can go that way. I also tweet a little... Um, but I'm Melia Bella everywhere. And I'm on Ravelry. I'm um, Viper989 on the PlayStation Network. Thanks. 
Super Dad of Two from Germany who watches us. And Ponky. And Ponky. Crafty and there's Girl. a number, 77. Crafty Girl 83. Something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's Ponky something. Yeah, she... she you've tried so many times to play me on Dust. She has more kills than I do, actually. Oh, well, geez. Psh, there you go. And, Look out. Uh, I've not been able to... Coordinate? Connect with... Maybe if you'd log into Ravelry, you guys could send well, a message. Every time... You know, she. I see her on there, and I'm like, oh, sweet. And then I get into another squad, and there's no more room left. And six-member squads, that that's happens. all I have. But thanks for contacting me. I've been, we've been talking and chatting, and that's really cool. That is so, really cool. Uh, Viper989 on PlayStation Network, Viper f underscore 413 on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And on um, now Ravelry Twitter, because but I you lost don't my tweet. account, and I don't really tweet. Um, I have some other projects coming up, some knit-alongs I'm taking part in that we'll talk about next week. So. You can find me under Sean Sibley on Facebook. Thanks for stopping by. And we'll see you hopefully next week. One week. Peace out. Can you do the chicken dance with your feet? Yeah.